Good afternoon. Welcome to Medcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me is Mangalam Malu. Recovery. That is something that we are seeing right now. It's a 300 point recovery on the Nifty from the lows. Banking index, IT, all of them contributing as well. And the Midcap outperformance, at least uh, in terms of the number of days we have been seeing Midcap's gain continues today as well. Absolutely. You know, when we started the day, we had the mid-caps outperformed by virtue of not gaining as much as the big caps, but then you had the big caps surge in the second half of trade around midday itself, and now the mid-caps are underperforming by not gaining as much as the big caps itself, but still, we're up about three-tenths of a percent. Let's talk about all the top stories that we're tracking this afternoon for you. Market near days high after a soft start ahead of expiry, the RBI's monetary policy meeting outcome tomorrow, IT index too rallies and it's moved to the day's high along with pharma and realty, which are slumping mid-caps up around a third of a percent. Indus Tower surges after Vodafone PLC sells its stake in the company via block deals. The proceeds will be used to repay its debt and invest in Vodafone Idea, which will use the money to pay down dues to Indus Towers. Torrent Pharma is in focus after the company has entered into an agreement with a German pharma giant, Boehringer Ingelheim, to acquire its three anti-diabetes brands. Acquisition is expected to be completed by March 2025. Juniper Hotels is up around 2.5% after brokerage firm CLSA initiates with a buy call and a target price of 430 rupees a share. They say that they expect 16% EBITDA CAGR over FY25 to FY27. Midcap IT firm Persistent Systems up in trade on the back of a positive brokerage note coming in from CLSA. The brokerage firm gives an outperform call, raises its target price to near 8500 on the back of multiple growth drivers and margin levers. Okay, all right. Those are the top headlines for the markets. Of course, the headline is that there has been a sharp recovery from the lows. It's a 150-point uptick that we're looking at on the Nifty. And it was just like half an hour back that we saw that sharp surge from the lows come by after the fall that we saw from the opening highs as well. Nifty IT is contributing to the gains. The mid-caps continue to do well. And there is an outperformance which is coming from the small cap index in the last couple of trading sessions. That continues. Small caps continue to outperform mid-caps as well. So that index is up around 7 tenths of a percent as well. A lot of moving parts in the broader markets, which of course Armaz will tell us in just a bit. But otherwise, we'll have to see whether uh, the surge that we're seeing that continues or not, or there's more volatility by the end of the trading session. Absolutely. You spoke about the small cap index. The Nifty is up two thirds of a percent. The small cap index is up almost a percent. And in that, if you look at some of these cash names as well, you know, they are spiking. And how we have a double digit gain that we've seen for names like Shalimar Paints up around 10 percent, AGI Green Pack up around four and a half, five percent. Swiggy continues to do well. 63 Moons continues to do well. We have Maharashtra Seamless, which is up about 11 odd percent as well. And the new FNO entrants doing extremely well too. So let's go straight across to Hormaz, who has all the mid-cap movers this afternoon. Hormaz. You know, mid-cap certainly turning from outperformers to underperformers swiftly on the back of that outperformance that we are seeing in the Nifty. But in there, plenty of movers then within the broader markets and mostly on the positive side as we speak. So we'll start off with the gainers in the broader markets and Castrol is one of them and it's continuing to grow from strength to strength in today's session as well. 6% higher there on Castrol. Kalpataru Projects is up 7%. A sharp spike seen there as well. And my Max Healthcare, in fact, too, seen some gains in today's session. The capital market link names, though, are the stars of today's trading session, be it BSC, be it CDSL. Or both of them have hit record highs. Motilal Oswal is near its record highs. And Angel One continues to recover from the lows. It's still down on a year-to-date basis, but still up 4.5% in today's trading session. Some other names that are doing well in today's trading session include the likes of Zomato and Swiggy, both of them hitting new highs in today's session. Zomato crossed 300 on an intraday basis, so good going there as well. Stocks doing well on the back of strong volumes, and they'll come up on your screen. Some of the movers there, Maharashtra Seamless, as Manglam just highlighted, Triveni Engineering, Action Construction, and HEG wanted to highlight in particular, not because of the gains, but almost 12% of equity has changed hands through the course of the day in HEG, and you can see See that in the stock reaction as well. And lastly, some underperformers in today's trading session. And they include the likes of Graphite India moving in line with the fall in HEG as well. TBO Tech, Vodafone Idea and Oil India, DV's Laboratories, all of them. DV's has recovered from the lows of the day, but still remains in the red. Back to you guys. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for joining us, Ormas, with all those uh, details and names as well. It's a good time to get a technical check on the markets. Vinay Rajni from HDFC Securities is joining us for just that. Vinay, good afternoon. Well, uh, do we see uh, some addition or I would say um, uh, more buying from on these levels or we could see some consolidation? What's the important level to watch out for now? 
Yeah, so Nifty has given a clear cut breakout. The inverted head and shoulder pattern breakout was seen, and it is into continuation of the uptrend. And the target which I see for the Nifty is around 25,000, so 400 points more upside we can expect from the Nifty. And as we have been discussing, the mid cap and small caps have been outperforming. So Nifty, small cap, and micro cap, as well as the mid cap index, actually has been rising for last. 10 consecutive sessions or so today is the 10th consecutive session we have seen back to back rise so breadth of the market has been very uh, strong and small cap and micro cap indices are actually just a couple of percentage away from their all time high while if we were to talk about the nifty nifty is still 6% away from its all time high so in a way the breadth of the market and the uh, mid cap small cap indices are showing great amount of strength that's a very good sign and the pattern which we see in the nifty has reclaimed a level of above 50 and 100 days EMA, that's a very good sign. So I see a target of 25,000 in the coming trading sessions and uh, in a couple of weeks, and I see a strong support emerging at 24,300. So keeping that stop loss in mind, one to one can continue to hold on to their long position. And uh, the next target for the Nifty I see is around 25,000 to 25,100. 25,000 to 25,100. Uh, well, Vijay, uh, Vinay, what, what stocks are you betting on right now? Yeah, so if I were to look at the large cap stocks, the Larson and Dubro can participate because we have been witnessing the consolidation in this particular stock for last many weeks and in fact we can say for last many months this stock has been into consolidation and it looks very strong and it is on the verge of giving a big breakout on the medium to long term charts. So LNT I am taking bet on which is uh, trading around 3800. One can buy with a uh, stop, uh, trading stop loss of 3740. Uh, for the short term I see a target of 3900. So LNT is one of the stocks which I like. The second one I pick is from the PSU Bank. So PSU Canada Bank is looking very strong to me. And uh, PSU Bank Index is given a fresh breakouts on the chart. So Canada Bank can be bought around 108.5. I would suggest a stop loss at 105. And for one week, we can take a target of 113. So Canada Bank and LNT would be my preferred bring, uh, picks from the large cap segment. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us and uh, telling us what the next important levels to watch out for in the Nifty are. With that, we'll slip into a short break. Sriram Khattar, the Vice Chairman and MD at DCCDL, will join us next to discuss the latest deals and the outlook on commercial reality. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. Well, DLF has been in news after the substrate of TCCDL, which is the commercial arm, will be selling Kolkata Tech Park to RDB Primark Techno Park. Um, and this is for over around 600 crore rupees. Mr. Sriram Khattar, the Vice Chairman and MD at DLF, DLF Cyber City Developers, uh, is joining us now to take a few questions on this and the commercial outlook uh, generally. For the company as well. Mr. Khattar, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, well, you know, before I ask you about this uh, sale that has happened in the IT park, I just want to understand the current occupancy levels that you're seeing right now. It has been consistently increasing. What is it right now, considering that we did have the festive season? Was it better than quarter two? And what is the outlook for quarter four as well? So, uh, we started the year with a vacancy of about 9% which at the end of quarter two came down to about seven, seven and a half percent. And we plan to end the year at a vacancy of five to six percent on the commercial offices side. On the retail side, the vacancy has been consistently between two to three percent, which will continue because of the normal tenancy churns that keep happening in the retail industry. Mm. Right. And when do the rentals of DLF Atrium Place and the next phase of downturn, Gurugram and Chennai start coming in? I mean, you typically pre-release your buildings before starting. Yeah. So I'll split it into three parts. I'll start with the two downtowns first. So the, the downtown Gurugram has already got about 1.7 million square feet of operating buildings. About 2 million square feet is getting completed in about two months' time, and the rentals for this will start by May, June of next year. The uh, downtown in Chennai, uh, two blocks of 2 million are already occupied, rented, and operational, and another 1 million, the rentals will again start by May next year. Uh, Atrium Place is a project which is about 3 million square feet, out of which 2 million will be ready by April next year, and the rental will start by about August uh, next mm -hmm. year. One tower of about a million square feet will be ready by end of next year, and the rentals will start 
by about April, May of 26. Now, this is on the existing assets which are just completed or about to be completed in the next 12 months or so. Uh, we have two very large projects that are going on. One is the phase two of uh, downtown Gurgaon, which is five and a half million square feet of offices and two, two million odd square feet of retail. Uh, this, the construction work has already commenced and we are planning to complete this assets by FY28. And the rentals will start in the beginning of calendar year, FY28. Similarly, okay, so the sorry. Please the, go uh, ahead. Please go ahead. No, please yeah. go ahead. Yes. Similarly, in the uh, Chennai uh, downtown, uh, we whilst we have finished phase one, construction on phase two started in the month of June, July, which is likely to finish by 27, and rentals are going to start in 28, and that is about three and a half to 3.6 million square feet. Okay, so that's a lot of addition that you're going to see in the pipeline, right? In different yes. uh, geographies. So, you know, in six months, FY25, you've done rentals of around 3,200 crore rupees. Say one to two years down the line when all or most of these projects also come on stream, you start booking rentals from that. What would the exit run rate look like? What's the target? So, uh, as we have given it in our analyst presentations, our uh, run rate in DCCDL will be about 5,000 crores as of FY25, going up to 5,800 uh, crores in FY26. In addition to that, there are certain assets, commercial assets, which are housed in, the, in DLF and not in DCCDL where the rentals for FY25 will be in the ballpark of 300 crores, but FY26 will go up to 800 to 850 crores because of certain rentals starting at Atrium Place and the three malls coming up in the books of DLF. So including DLF and DCCDL by FY26, you could have a run rate of close to around 65, 64, 6500 crores. About 5900 5, to 6000, 5000 in DCCDL and 8900 in DLF. All right, take that point. And what about, uh, you know, the SAZs? How much area have you denotified out there? And what's the mark to market rentals for these denotified areas? And I just wanted to understand what the incremental percentage from the last rental has been here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, SEZs, uh, we have already uh, denotified about 2 million square feet. Out of this 2 million square feet, about a million, 1.2 million has already been leased. Uh, in uh, the uh, Gurgaon area, SEZs, we have getting better rentals than in the SEZs. Whereas in Chennai and Hyderabad, where the general stock in the city of SEZ assets is quite large, the rentals we are getting are similar to the rentals that we get for SEZs. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Khattar, then, then coming back to this recent uh, sale that you made in Kolkata, what will those 600 crores be used for? And you also have a land in Pune. So will you be making a comeback there with any more uh, commercial properties? So uh, this uh, sale which we did was uh, uh, actually, uh, it's a slum sale at 637. But if you add the deposits, etc., it's, it's uh, the value of the asset is about 675 crores. Uh, this has gone to pair down the debt of about 250 crores, which was there on this asset. The balance 400 crores comes to our normal cash flows, which will be used in the construction and growth of DCCDF. And as, Pune, far, yeah. as far as Pune is concerned, uh, we keep... Uh, looking at uh, options and opportunities and uh, uh, comparative advantages of whether to develop it or to hold on for some more time. At the moment, we are not finding the rental rates attractive in the location where we have our properties to invest in that at present. But, you know, as you know, land is something which can go sit but does not die. Mm -hmm. And at some stage, once it comes out and we find it com uh, competitive and we find a good ROI, we'll surely develop it. All right, take that point. Thanks a lot, Mr. Khattar, for stopping by and giving us all those details on uh, your business right now. We'd have liked a longer conversation to get a sense of how retail is doing in the festive season, etc. as well. But we'll leave that for another day itself. Uh, take a short break, come back, focus on the markets, a bunch of individual stocks. Vishal Singh now.
at the high point of trade for markets right now. It seems like it's a formidable move above the 24,600 mark right now. Uh, if this sustains, then maybe we see further short squeeze as we move towards the expiry on the Nifty itself. We keep an eye out on that. The Nifty is up almost uh, three quarters of a percent right now. The last leg driven by IT stocks. So Infosys at the high point of trade alongside that. We have TCS and then the pharmaceutical stocks also playing their part, even as the financials continue to do well. Speaking of financials, the capital market plays. They have to be kept an eye out on. Angel One is now up 6%. Again, a recent FNO entrant, along with BSE, which is up in double digits. IGL, Indrapras Gas, is actually at the high point of trade as well. And this, as the board is considering a bonus, so started off slightly soft uh, and then thereafter disregarded the news that came by where there was no respite coming in on APM gas allocation. And the stock seems to have priced that in up almost 6%. Castrol is the other one from the broader markets, which is surging towards the higher end of today's trading range. Tata Alexi made a comeback in the FNO in December series. That stock too seems to be moving higher currently at the high point of trade. With that, we'll leave it to the team of Mutual Fund Corner when we return. Thank you for watching Mid Cap Radar.